New for 2024, Dell has finally refreshed the XPS range. The XPS 15 and 17 of old have now been replaced by the new look 14 and 16 inch XPS range. Dell have taken some of the design cues from the previous XPS 13 Plus reviewed almost two years ago to create two premium creator laptops. But can this new model tempt you to trade in your trusty old laptop? Keep watching to find out. So tonight we're gonna to be reviewing this XPS 14, but if it's the XPS 16 you're interested in, that is gonna be next. So if you're not already subscribed, hit that button and bell to be notified of that review. Now Dell have created this XPS 14 in either the traditional graphite or the platinum that I have here. And wow, this is a beautiful looking device. To the color of the deck, the tiny bezels, the beautiful OLED screen. This is one premium laptop and so it should be because it doesn't come cheap. Now our review unit came in at £2,349 in the UK. And for that, we got the Core Ultra 7 155H CPU with an NVIDIA RTX 4050, 120 Hz 3200 by 2000 OLED touchscreen, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabyte SSD. Now if that's too much for you, you can lose the 4050 and take a 1200p IPS panel and then it comes in at 1599. Then once you've seen this OLED panel, you're probably going to be looking down the back of your sofa to make up the difference. Taking a look around this laptop, you'd be forgiven for thinking it's a 13 inch laptop. Dell always makes their XPS line incredibly compact, but pick it up and wow, this is dense. It weighs in at 1.79 kilograms with the Nvidia graphics card. So it's actually heavier than the 16 inch Galaxy Book 4 Pro that we've just reviewed. But with weight comes reliability and man, this laptop is solid. There's no flex, squeak or creaks. And I'm really impressed with the build quality. Opening the hinge is firm and satisfying. There's no scream wobble, although you may not be able to easily open it with one hand because there's no decent cutout on the lid. Now this reveals the beautiful platinum deck. Now you may be wondering where the trackpad is. The trackpad is a glass haptic trackpad hidden in the front section of the palm rest. It works amazingly and you can click anywhere on the trackpad like you would on a modern MacBook. Moving up to the keyboard and although it looks great and types well, the white backlighting is not clear unless you're in a very dark environment. My advice is either to turn it off in a lit environment or buy the graphite model where the black keys and white backlight has better contrast. Now above the keyboard there's an OLED touch row which can either be multimedia keys or F keys. But again I have two gripes with these. Firstly, would it have killed Dell to give them haptic feedback so you know when you press them? This is supposed to be a premium laptop. And secondly, why do they keep turning off when my keyboard backlighting turns off? Now when the keyboard backlighting goes off, you can still see these keys, but when the actual F key backlights goes off, they are literally off. Either side of the keyboard, we have speaker grills hiding an eight watt four speaker system, and they sound like this. Speaker test of the new XPS 14, starting at 50% volume. And 80%. and 100%. Wow, for a 14 inch laptop, I mean, those are some pretty incredible speakers. They're loud, they're pretty full sounding. They're definitely where I reckon the best Windows 14 inch laptop speakers I've ever heard. Now moving up to the screen, and this is a highlight of the laptop, a 3.2 by 2K, 120 Hertz OLED touchscreen. This thing is an absolute beauty. If you're forking out this much money for a premium laptop, I do recommend you get this OLED display, even though it costs an extra 300 pounds. The screen is fast, bright, has beautiful colors and those inky blacks. And now we have 120 Hertz and a higher PWM flicker rate. I can finally use this OLED display without getting eye strain. Above the screen, we have the 1080p webcam, which looks and sounds like this. This is a test of the webcams and the microphones on the new XPS 14. Now, this is a Windows Hello camera, so we do have some of the built-in features, 
such as automatic framing. So as I move around, you can see that it does frame me in the middle of the picture. This could be quite nice uh, if you're just slightly off center to your actual laptop. We also have the eye contact mode and we get the background effects. So we get the portrait blur, which I really like, and the standard blur, which is a much heavier blur if you're in a quite a messy environment. So overall, looks pretty good. What do you guys think? The webcam also includes Windows Hello facial recognition, which works fast and accurately, even in dim environments. And if you're not a big fan of the Windows Hello facial recognition, there is also a fingerprint reader built into the power button at the top right of the laptop, which also works flawlessly. Now, before we rip the base off and look inside this actual laptop, I wanna mention the ports. Now on the left side, we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and on the right side, we have one Thunderbolt 4, a micro SD slot, and a headset jack. I do miss not having a USB-A port, but Dell do kindly include a small dongle, which gives you a USB-A and an HDMI port. But my biggest gripe is the micro SD card slot. This laptop is supposed to be designed for creators. Most creators I know still use a full-size SD card slot, and the only time I use an actual micro SD is to get footage off an actual drone or an action cam. Shame on you, Dell. Now let's look inside the laptop. Getting into the laptop is very straightforward. There are eight T5 screws, then you just prise off the aluminium base plate. Once inside, we're greeted with a large 70 watt hour battery at the front of the laptop, and you can see the four speaker system under here. Then we have one M.2 SSD slot, and surprisingly mine shipped with a 30 millimeter drive, but there's definitely space for an 80 millimeter should you wish to upgrade it later. Now sadly, the RAM is soldered on, as is the case with all Core Ultra CPUs, so we can't blame Dell for that one, but so is the Wi-Fi card. And lastly, we can see the heatsink and two fan solution to exhaust all the heat out of the back of the laptop, and that leads me neatly to performance section. Now these new Intel Ultra CPUs are certainly more efficient than the 13th generation CPUs from Intel last year, but don't expect a big leap in performance. Running in Ultra mode, we ran Cinebench R23 and managed just under 14,000 points which hangs with a lot of slim laptops with a 13,700H last year, and they were pulling much more wattage. The ultra mode also allows the CPU to sit at 45 watts, which leads to about 95 degrees centigrade of temperatures and 46 decibels of fan noise. Now switching it down to the optimized or quiet led to a much more pleasant experience in terms of the temperature and fan noise. Dell also offers the cool mode, which caps the wattage at 30 watts on the CPU and ramps the fan all the way back up to 46 decibels, again to prioritize temperatures. Single core scores are also pretty good, but not much of an improvement over last year. I had hoped with these new Intel CPUs, we'd have a much better boost in this area, as single core performance does lead to a snappy feeling PC. Moving to the GPU, and we have the RTX 4050 in here with six gigabytes of VRAM. Although this is an entry level discrete card, it will certainly provide a big boost for productivity workflow and light gaming. Now looking at the TGP of this card, we can see it's listed as a 40 watt card, but sadly I've never managed to get the actual power budget above 30 watts in this laptop. Now this leads to some pretty average 3D Mark scores, though do bear in mind this is a very compact slim and light 14 inch laptop. Like gaming is certainly possible if you adjust the settings. You won't be playing at AAA titles at native resolution and max settings, but eSports titles all play very well. Gaming on ultra performance, the fans maxed out at 49 decibels, but considering the very small drop in performance, moving to optimized, I would leave it on that one for a much more comfortable 45 decibels. The quiet mode max out 40 decibels, but at the expense of 20% of performance if you do want a really quiet laptop. And the palm rest and keyboard remained cool throughout all of our testing, which was really great to see considering how small and compact this laptop is. Gaming aside, this 30 watt 4050 does really help if you plan on using this laptop for actual work. It will cut through your Photoshop and it even managed my 4K editing pretty well. You can also use this laptop for moderate 3D design tasks such as CAD or Blender. Battery performance though was way worse than I was expecting. Running Geekbench 6 in the ultra mode on battery, it scored way lower than most of the laptops I've tested recently and about 40% less performance than when you're on mains. And battery life was also a bit lower than I expected with us only getting six hours and 20 minutes with our usual YouTube streaming test over Wi-Fi at 200 nits of brightness. Now hopefully this is something Dell can improve in an upcoming BIOS update, but you have to take it as it is at the moment. But as this entire laptop is powered via USB-C, Dell provide a tiny 100 watt power adapter with the laptop, plus you can also easily use a dock or PD monitor to completely power this device. 
and I find that really handy as I can plug this laptop into my Dell 4K UltraSharp with just one cable and have full performance from the laptop through the 4K display and have access to my keyboard, mouse and even an Ethernet from that monitor. So on to the conclusion. Now this is an amazing laptop, providing you understand that Dell are prioritizing looks and size over performance. If you need a more powerful workstation, this isn't the laptop for you. And that's hopefully the role that the XPS 16 will fill. And we will be testing that one very soon. But for the majority of people that want a laptop they can take everywhere with them, yet still have the power to complete the majority of a professional creative's tasks and even game on the side, then this is a compelling option. The positives are clearly the size and the build quality of this laptop, along with its beautiful looks and the amazing screen and speakers. And that's not to say it doesn't have niggles. I'm not the biggest fan of this touch bar buttons and the battery life could be much better. Well, that's my thoughts on the Dell XPS 14. As always, I'd love to know what you guys think of this laptop. Would you consider buying a 14 inch XPS or do you think the XPS 16 is a much more compelling option? As always, put your comments down below when I will get back to you. And lastly, Thanks for watching.